Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products and Focus. So having a quick look at the equity markets, we had a failed rally again last night, unable to break above that 21 period SMA and we're just briefly above 17,561, which is a support level that we've had in play for quite some time. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of the picture. We've been in a sideways moving market for quite a while up until July this year, had plunge in the Dow, and then we've had this slow move to the upside. Doesn't look like we're, like we're going to get this uh, this kind of Santa Claus rally that we're used to, and the backdrop of uh, incredibly low cr uh, crude oil prices, which doesn't show a lot of uh, confidence in uh, future demand from people who aren't buying at these low levels. You've had the Chinese yuan depreciate to a four and a half year low, uh, which also shows a lack of confidence in that in that currency. Some people are saying that the Chinese government are allowing it since it uh, joined that basket of currencies from the IMF uh, for it to get down that little bit lower. But um, there's a lot of strange things happening in China as well regarding a number of uh, high level financial executives have all gone missing, which a large number of uh, of commentators are. Are, are saying as a, as a government crackdown on unscrupulous um, kind of trading practices and a lot of these people can't be reached. So that's added a couple of little curveballs uh, into the markets just before next week's FOMC, which is very widely expected to come with it, uh, the first US rate hike in uh, almost a decade, uh, which could have quite big impacts on money flows out of some major uh, parts of the world as people start buying the US dollar because it's got a higher yield. Uh, and you also have to think about the huge debt piles that are all denominated in US dollars, uh, the impact that a higher rate is gonna have on the repayment of those debts. So this is currently currently where we sit on the US 30. That's a little bit of background as to what's uh, kind of the themes in the market right now. So looking at the UK 100, poor UK 100 is having a tough time mainly due to the uh, sell-off in the commodity markets. And even though the dollar has kind of wobbled a little bit over the last couple of days, I mean, we haven't seen a massive turnaround in copper or, uh, or, or crude. And in fact, even, even gold's not keeping its head above uh, 1,075 right now. It's down at 1,070. So you can see by the candles here, there is some sort of semblance of support around about 60.73 on the UK 100. It ticked a little bit below there on Wednesday, stopped dead in its tracks on there yesterday. It's similar, similar picture today, series of lower highs on these candles. Uh, it kind of gives you an idea of what might happen next. So then looking at Japan 225, we've had a rebound, a slight rebound as the, as the yen lost a little bit of strength. Yesterday as the dollar began to kind of try and wrestle control slightly. Euro dollars down a little bit lower. GBP USD is uh, it's okay. We'll come back to that in a second. But um, dollar yen is at 121.90. It was down at 121.10 earlier on. So that slight bounce is maybe giving Japan to do five just a little bit of leeway right there. But from a technical perspective, it's certainly looking pressured. So this is dollar yen. We're actually off the session highs again. So we almost were getting a decent rally, but we've been pushed back down. Uh, just below 121 spot 87, which again is a level that's been in play uh, since, uh, well, almost this time last year. Uh, so that gives you a flavor of what's going on. From a technical analysis perspective, the fact that we've already, we've, we've had a technical breakout, or what appears to be a, te a technical breakout higher, but now it's been pushed right back down again. That's perhaps indicative of the uh, of the uphill struggle that dollar yen is going to have in the short term. But you know, you have to wait until uh, until the 16th on Wednesday to get the IFOMC statement. So let's have a look at uh, crude oil now, at almost almost at fresh lows again. Thirty five dollars thirty cents is the next potential support, and you know this is from seven years ago. So uh, we're moving up from seven years ago, but let's have a, let's have a quick look. You actually have to go on to a weekly chart. Okay, it must be quite a while ago. Uh, from 2008, actually, <laughs> that is uh, that is seven years ago. So that gives you an idea of where we where we are. Like this is the height of the financial crisis, and that's where crude oil is right now. That's completely crazy to think that um, the, the heights of 2008 crude oil was was almost at 150 dollars a barrel, and now to say that we're at 36 dollars is is incredible. The thing is, where does crude oil go once it breaks 35 dollars? Uh, that's a very good question. So let me just go into my monthly chart. Uh, if we go back to 2002, we can go back 
26 years. Right. I actually have to get my drawing tool out here because it's so far, so long ago. Uh, 27, 24, 17. Wow. Quite crazy to think that in 1998, 1999, the Gulf War times, that we were down here, $10. Crazy. Okay, so that, that gives you a bit of an idea of where we, where we have been before. And I'm just going to keep this level on here. If I take a closer level. Okay, let, let's just take one of these points down here. And... Uh, it will be worth you guys uh, maybe having a look at some of these levels because they're quite they're quite they're quite impressive, uh, but that's where we could go. So, for everybody who's buying up uh, crude oil right now, thinking well, long term has got to, has got to turn back, it it might well do. But just think of the fact that it has been a lot lower before, and not to lose sight of that. So, where we are with gold is um, we're quite close to 1,072. Uh, lots of volatility around this point has been has tried to move higher, tried to break lower, but it seems to really quite like this level of uh, 1,072. So, uh, in the absence of much economic on the data, we do have UK US retail sales today, and the uh, Consumer Sentiment University of Michigan Sentiment Index due today. So, that might be a little bit of a kickstart. But I think almost everybody now is going to be waiting for for Wednesday's F S o FOMC. That's the big one. Euro dollar, uh, you can see we had a bit of a reversal yesterday, but might be just about a profit taking because we we are, were accelerating a lot to the upside, close to one spot ten ninety. Uh, next potential support one spot zero eight nineteen. So GBP USD retracement uh, potentially back down to one spot fifty one ten. You can see we actually reached that point yesterday. Still had a negative day. We're still moving lower this morning, uh, um, but we're quite close to that twenty one period SMA as well. So still on the downtrends, uh, one spot 51.10, followed by one spot 50.27, could be uh, could be levels there that are worth having a quick look at. So that gives you a bit of an idea of uh, of where we are with cable. So economic data wise, the day we've already covered, actually very important. Saturday comes with it a whole host of Chinese data again. Retail sales, industrial production, and urban investment. That's at the weekend, so do consider that when you're holding your positions over overnight. Don't forget about those. And then Monday whole host of Japanese data, business sentiment survey information. And then Tuesday, you've got CPI uh, and the ZEW business report that's big for Germany and uh, also CPI for, uh, for the US as well. So guys, as ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your layout going forward and join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.